Greetings and welcome. We have a couple occasions for Thanksgiving in our common life. In addition to our lectionary-based spiritual coffee hour at 9 a.m. over Zoom, we also have two guests joining us for online worship today. Dr. Lori Lind is our guest organist, and she is joining us. It is a privilege to have her among us virtually as our musician for worship today. We also have a guest preacher joining us through the Bishop's Online Chapel in the Diocese of Virginia. The Reverend Joey Baker Pierce is the chaplain at St. Margaret's Episcopal School here in Tappahannock, Virginia, and it is a privilege to have her among us as well today, virtually. In our further future, I wanted to make note of a couple items for Holy Week and Easter. Some St. Barnabas members have chosen to make an offering uh, to contribute to the Easter flowers in memory of someone or a particular group of individuals. And if you'd like to do that, please reach out to our parish office via email or phone uh, on Monday, if at all possible, so that those names can be included in our service bulletin for Easter. We want to Remember those who are close to our hearts, even as we celebrate Easter this year. Speaking of Easter, Easter is one of our occasions we're planning to have outdoor worship, God willing and weather permitting. We're also planning on having outdoor worship on Palm Sunday and on Good Friday. If you'd prefer to participate from home, participate virtually from home, you're welcome to do so. Uh, our services at 10.15 a.m. on Palm Sunday and 10.15 a.m. on Easter are going to be live streamed, so you're welcome to participate virtually if you'd prefer that. Um, you're also welcome to participate in person, uh, wearing a mask, maintaining physical distance from others as long as you are uh, healthy and have not come into contact with anybody who has COVID in the last two weeks. For the rest of Holy Week, we have a variety of online and in-person options. For Monday, Thursday, we're having an online service on Zoom, and we're actually having a guest preacher for that service. Our December and January seminarian, Salal Cameron, is joining us. Uh, he's been ordained. This is a wonderful occasion for Thanksgiving, and I invite you to join us over Zoom so that we can uh, give thanks for him, for his ministry, for his ordination, as well as to uh, hear him preach and serve as our deacon for that service over Zoom, where we'll have spiritual communion um, in the sanctuary here, and we'll be able to gather together virtually. On Good Friday, you, Catherine has kindly sent out uh, a sign-up genius. If you would like, we're opening up the church for private prayer for 20-minute slots between about 8.30 and 4.30 with a break in the middle for our Good Friday outdoor service uh, at noon on Good Friday. So if you'd like to pray in the sanctuary uh, individually, you're welcome to do that. If you sign up ahead of time for a, a slot, uh, don't forget your mask again. And we'll also have an outdoor service on Good Friday, weather permitting, God willing. Uh, everyone will be able to gather together uh, for an outdoor service on Good Friday at noon. That won't be live streamed, but we're also having a 7 p.m. Zoom service uh, so that we can gather together virtually for anyone who would prefer to worship at night on Good Friday or who would prefer to not gather in person. Much to look forward to, much to anticipate. Uh, I'll also make note that the Sunday after Easter, we're going to gather for the diocesan worship service and not our regular St. Barnabas online worship service. So our next online worship, entirely online worship service for St. Barnabas will be two weeks after Easter, April 18th. Grace and peace to you, sisters and brothers and siblings.
Greetings, students. I've asked Lois Bear to hop up in Kenneth Sheeler's tree and assist with our students' message this morning. Lois Bear, for those who may not know, Lois Bear lives on our organ console with a note as follows. Hello, I'm Lois Bear, named for our dear friend Lois Brown, who is watching over the choir to make sure that you sing out loud and clear with joy and exuberance. I wouldn't mind a pat or a hug as you walk by. Lois Bear, along with the birds singing, with the arrival of spring, the longer days and the new life bursting forth in the places that looked like death. Lois Bear is a physical embodiment and reminder of a deeper truth that I think is also expressed in one of our hymns this morning, offered by Dr. Lind, our guest organist. She does an improvisation on what wondrous love is this, hymn number 439 in our 1982 hymnal. Hymn number 439. And it goes like this. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. At this point in our Lenten journey, we're preparing for Holy Week. We're preparing for Good Friday, that day when we remember Christ offering himself on the cross for the whole world, for each of us. It's an expression of love. And I think we can appreciate the birds singing and any occasion we have to sing, whether in online church with family or on our own. Any opportunity we have to sing can be an opportunity to join that larger chorus, the great cloud of witnesses that we can't perceive directly with our ears, but that is with us always. Christ's peace and grace be with you this day and always, and especially this Lenten season, as we prepare for Good Friday and Easter.
We begin our service today on page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. I'll arise and go to my Father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your Son. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Jubilate can be found on pages 82 to 83 in the Book of Common Prayer. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness, his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Canticle 10. The 
the second song of Isaiah, found on pages 86 and 87 in the Book of Common Prayer. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Speak to the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We wish to see Jesus. Some Greeks came and said this to the disciples of Jesus, to Philip and to Andrew, maybe because Philip had a Greek sounding name or maybe because they all were from the same place. Whatever reason, they came to these two disciples making their request. And together, Philip and Andrew go and tell Jesus that some Greeks are there and said, sir, we wish to see Jesus. I've always found these words to be so dramatic, astounding even, the way that they carry throughout the ages. These words that have been carved into pulpits all over the world, reminding preachers that the congregation sits there with these words hanging over their heads, we wish to see Jesus. Even the first pulpit I was called to preach in had a little brass plaque right where my right hand naturally fell when I was standing in it. We wish to see Jesus, given by Anna Mae McMurray. As a new priest, so many times I stepped into that space wondering what they wished to see or hear or experience in that small hillside church. Preaching to a group of bikers after a tragic motor vehicle accident took the life of a young rider. We wish to see Jesus. Preaching to a young family at the baptism of their first daughter. We wish to see Jesus. Preaching to a congregation of just 10 after the family matriarch had died. We wish to see Jesus. Preaching to couples on their wedding days, children about to receive first communion, 20 year olds preparing for confirmation, children leaving for mission trips, youth going to summer camp, seniors off to college, members inducted into the altar guild, people diagnosed with cancer, people having lost their jobs. We wish to see Jesus. 
I wonder as well what those Greeks wanted that day. What was it in their lives that motivated them to come to the disciples and say, we wish to see Jesus? Healing? A touch of a cloak? A miracle like water into wine? A profound word or a life-changing teaching? Simply an encounter with the man of the hour, a celebrity? We wish to see Jesus. Whatever it was, it drew them first to Philip and Andrew and Philip and Andrew to Jesus to make the request. But they are about to find out that seeing Jesus is more than a quick appointment with a magic physician or a signature on a glossy celebrity photo with a Sharpie marker. Seeing Jesus, as Jesus goes on to say, is about seeing Jesus lifted up, seeing Jesus in the glory of the cross. When my nephew was about three or four, during Lent, he was taught in Sunday school about the crucifixion. And that day he was uncharacteristically quiet on the car ride home. His dad began to ask probing questions about Sunday school. No, no one was mean to him. Yes, he liked the games. Yes, he ate his snack. Yes, he remembered his offering. Finally, the truth came to light when he asked, Dad, why would the church kill a baby? That nearly brought the car to a screeching halt. The little boy went on to explain his understanding that this little baby, the one that they just sang happy birthday Jesus to a couple months ago, the one that was just born in a stable at Christmas, this baby was killed and this was beyond his understanding. Trying to help this youngster understand that this was a retelling of a story that took place over time somehow seemed to make things even more confusing. Sometimes I think perhaps we come to Jesus with a very similar understanding. We would like to see Jesus. We would like to see baby Jesus. We would like to see healing Jesus. We would like to see teaching Jesus. We are even okay with cleansing the temple Jesus. But Jesus on the cross, well, that's okay if we don't see. But we need to see. We need to see that Jesus because it reveals not only the power of God, but the very brokenness of the world that we seek to upend. It could be that precisely there we see Jesus lifted up and overcoming the truth of our very broken world. It's in the horror of the cross of the death and the waiting, that the world is revealed for what it is, and so is God. God is revealed as overcoming, lifted up, and there for all, the whole world. A world saying, we wish to see Jesus. And Jesus is there. Jesus is in the pain and the brokenness, the fractured relationships, the search for truth, the poison of injustice, the fear of the unknown. Jesus is there with the people standing in those places saying, we wish to see Jesus. Jesus is there in the open arms and the comfort of another, in the struggle for peace, in the healing, in the feeding, the hungry, in the joy and in the glory. We wish to see Jesus. And our gospel today reminds us that to see Jesus, we must be prepared to follow where Jesus leads. Jesus leads to healing and to welcome, to comfort and to a whole new kingdom. But first, Jesus leads to the cross. And we will follow. Amen. A reading of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 66 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The prayers continue at the bottom of page 67, part A. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace O Lord, in all the world, for only in Thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under Thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let Thy way be known upon earth, Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. We now continue with the collect of the day and other prayers. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Mission Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For the human family, O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family, Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls which separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For social service. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Blessed we beseech thee, all who following in his footsteps give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage they may minister in Christ's name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy. For the love of Christ who laid down his life for us, the same Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For education, especially as our virtual house church groups reflect on another aspect of the way of love this week. To learn. Following the wisdom tradition found in Proverbs chapter 8, where wisdom is embodied in the form of a woman standing at the crossroads, calling out to all who live. 
Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, enlightened by thy Holy Spirit, those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of thy truth, they may worship thee and serve thee from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to thy never-failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that thou art doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops priests, and deacons, remembering especially our presiding bishop, the most reverend Michael Bruce Curry, our bishops, retired bishops, rector, the reverend John Bolin Shelato, for our vestry, wardens, and staff, and the Angl Anglican and diocesan cycles of prayer, 
for Iglesia Anglicana de Chile, for the South Shenandoah Region Churches, Cathedral Shrine of the Transfiguration, Orkney Springs, Christ Luray, Emmanuel Harrisonburg, Emmanuel Woodstock, Linwood Parish, Grace Memorial, Port Republic and St. Stephen and the Good Shepherd, Elkton, St. Andrews, Mount Jackson, St. George's Pine Grove, Stanley, St. Paul's, Ingham, Shenandoah, and for the Church of San Juan Bautista, Palm, Palma, Soriano, Cuba. that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, remembering especially James Cameron Jr. and Betty Dunlop. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially for the needs and concerns of this congregation. Stephen Ackert, Bernard Blair, Emma Blevins, Jean Ann Braddon, Margot Donnelly, Frank Donnelly, Rotha Fry, Preston George, Lee Gibbs, Roger Hefferin, Sharon Jones, Carolyn Lilienthal, Tom Lyles, Cindy McLaughlin, Marion Meany, Aaliyah Phillips, Beth Phillips, Anne Radway, Barbara Rigdon, Anne Sales, Frank Spink, Kathleen Stark, David Steidel, Dana Weissman, Ann Woodall, Mary Yeaman, and for Keith, Mary, Ralph, Michael, Tony, Brian, Cam, Carice, Ariel, Audrey, Keith, Ron, Megan, Dana Ann, Nicholas, Nathan, Mary, Gloria, Steve, Shirley, Bill, Garth, Woody, Amy, Patricia, John, Kit, and all first responders, healthcare workers, and essential workers. And for those attending college, Genevieve Phillips, Lizzie Robbins, Garrett Patterson, Matthew Duggar, Connor Harrington, and Emma Rose Stark. And also for those deployed, Matthew T. Robinson, United States Navy, Christopher Workman. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy Son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline your ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications to you, and grant that those things which we have faithfully asked according to your will may effectually be obtained, to the relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. 
We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.